Thank you very much. Yes, welcome to the only oil rig in the world where Sue Pollard could cool her heels after a hard day on her knees. Yes, it's a high high video game extravaganza where campers get up to all sorts of nefarious activities. To let us in on the first one of these, let's go over to Games Master. Greetings and welcome to the Games Week. I've chosen to start this evening with a bang on Terminator 2. With the aid of a bazooka, called the Menacer, our first doughty competitor will need to destroy the T-1000, the game's last obstacle, in under one and a half minutes. A healthy supply of ammunition is absolutely a beer, 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 beer. Oh dear, how terribly embarrassing. My calibration's playing up again. <clears throat> well, good luck with the challenge. Sharp shooting his way through this apocalyptic challenge is a feisty young fellow from Croydon. Please welcome Simon Bland. Welcome to the show, Simon. This is for you. Thank you. Now, Simon, tell us a little about the, about, about the Menacer. What's it like to play with? It's okay, it takes a bit of getting used to. How do you fancy your chances at the, the T2 game then? I don't know, it should be alright, I've had lots of practice at it. Alright, well listen, best of luck Simon, if you'd like to hang on there, get ready to shoot off. Riding shotgun with me for this challenge is Neil West from Mega. Welcome, Neil. Hi, Dominic. Now, what attributes does Simon need to be triumphant tonight? Well, he's got to have a sure eye and a quick trigger finger, that's for sure. Um, he says he's been practicing, which is good, because there are three crucial shots he's got to get in throughout this challenge. He's got to shoot the Terminator once in each eye and then between the eyes, and he's got to make sure that he doesn't get the boy John. Okay, he's got a lot to think about. Let's hope he's up to the task. So, Simon has one and a half minutes in which to dispose of the T-1000 and save mankind. Are you ready, Simon? Simon, Ready. your one and a half minutes begin now. So off okay. Simon's one and a half minutes. Now what's he doing at the start here? Right, all he's doing now is gaining some ammunition. These right. cartridges falling down are shotgun cartridges, you'll need those later on. Okay, we can see in the top left hand corner of the screen the amount of cartridges yeah. he's got. He's got 143. That's now. plenty, he won't need any more than that. We can see John running to safety, the right. T-1000's behind him. Um, he's going to take shelter somewhere over here on this platform. The T-1000 will then turn up and then it's the final showdown, the end of the game. Okay then, here's little John cowering away. He doesn't defend himself much, does he John? No, he doesn't, he's pretty feeble to be honest. And here's the T-1000. Okay. Bottom left hand side of the screen, we can see the energy that Simon's That's got. That's right. Obviously, Simon's got to protect that. He's got to avoid taking hits as much as possible. And the only way to do that is to keep gunning the T-1000 down. Now, the T-1000 is actually going for John Connor, isn't he? He is. That's right. Um, we've got to keep him away from John Connor, or else it's game over and for mankind and all sorts of other horrible things. Right. Now, okay, right. He's now it's enough. time to he's go. He's got to take on Simon. He's Absolutely. got the right eye. Now he's got to get the left. Oh, it's the right eye again. again. He's got to start again. He cannot do that. He can't shoot two with the same eye in a row. Okay. Oh, he's ducking and weaving this T. Okay, there goes the left. Now he's got to get the right one. Oh, no, he's oh. in the middle now. Is that all right? Is that working the right order? Yes, yeah, it has. Yeah, that was okay. Now he's got a blow let him get away with it. Nil. Yeah, he's just got to keep on firing. One minute, ten seconds. He's he got plenty of time left. He's done He's done it, done it anyway. He's no split problem. him in half. One minute, thirteen. It means Simon is triumphant. <laughs> well played, Simon. Well done, mate. Congratulations. Now... Simon, we gave you a minute and a half. You only needed one minute 13. Was, was there any problems for you at all there? No, I got a bit worried towards the end when you have to um, shoot him in one eye and then the other, but it seemed to go all right this time. It certainly did, and that masterful marksmanship means you have won the Golden Games Master Joystick! <laughs> Well 
for yet another happy camper leaps enthusiastically back to his cabin, three reviewers are desperate to thrust their opinions on the waiting world in this week's reviews. This week we set hearts a pumping and spirits erect as we look at heroic games. First up, the man with the hat and the worrying love of whips is back in Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Didn't like this very much. It's just a bit boring, really. Uh, it's a platform game. It's got. It's, it's simple. The actual gameplay of jumping over things and collecting objects has been done countless times before, and on the Mega Drive it just isn't passable anymore. Quite nice. Not the great, greatest thing you'll ever see on the Mega Drive but certainly okay. Next up on the NES, Errolton lookalikes unsheathe their weapons in Pirates. Really good, addictive, plenty of gameplay there. Should keep you going for hours and hours, weeks and weeks. Um, even the hardiest games player is going to find this a real challenge. Graphically, Pirates leaves a lot to be desired and it looks very crude. But scrape away that rubbish exterior and there's a real blinder of a game waiting to get out. This is excellent sterling stuff. Finally, a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, men wore white bathrobes and had hairy friends in Super Star Wars. It's challenging, it's really addictive, tons of variety. It's mainly platform based, but it's done extremely well. I absolutely loved it. When I first got hold of Star Wars, I was really delighted with what I saw. But it didn't take long to get to the end. Along with Super Mario Land, this is the game that your Super NES was made for. Super Star Wars is nothing short of spectacular. Everybody must have seen this spanking Super Nintendo ad that's been bombarding your senses for a while now. This week our feature looks at how it was made. The ad's creative director Andy Wakefield talks us through from start to finish. What Super Nintendo had to do when it was launched as a system was to establish itself as the ultimate in gameplay. We spent about three or four days, which went into a week and two weeks, just playing games. Um, we very quickly realised that we were absolutely useless. We couldn't get them past level one, and that's really the birth of the line, will you ever reach the end? The ad began life as a storyboard, a book of drawings showing what the finished advert would actually look like. The main character was then sketched out, but they required somebody to fill its boots. We thought the Sega guy was a bit too squeaky clean, a bit too Tom Cruise. We wanted someone a bit more Mickey Rourke. Mickey Rourke did not know quite what he was letting himself into, however. He was hurled around, turned upside down and filmed against blue screens. This would allow game footage and other film to be laid in behind him. But perhaps most difficult of all was the complete body cast which was required to make the robot costume. That was probably pretty painful. He was about eight hours in makeup. The stage was now set for the special effects technique called morphing. It's a technique that changes from one extreme to the other. We changed a, a normal looking guy to a superhuman robot. When you see the hands racing over the controls, that was done in, in a few different stages. The similar thing was done with a mask, and stage by stage, that visor came down over the face to form like a mercury over the, over the visor. Finally, how long does all this malarkey take to complete? All in all, from start to finish, was about three to five months in the end. The total cost has become a bit of a myth, really let's say half a million. Finally, if you're worried by press stories about video games and epilepsy, we have a special information line and a fact sheet on the subject. We'll give you the details at the end of the show. If you're gasping for tonight's celebrity challenge, then gasp no more, for it's over to Games Master who'll reveal all. Tonight's second challenge is a sharp shooting showdown on Galahad's Gallery. The object of the game is to accumulate points down at the local shopping mall by shooting more objects than your opponent. So prepare yourself for some anguish in the aisles and have a nice day. Shooting up a storm in this challenge, we have two celebrity policemen. From the bell, DC Carver and PC Garfield, alias Mark Winger and Hugh Higginson. Okay, they're obviously 
very, very excited. I'm dead excited myself. Listen, I know you've got a hectic schedule. Do you find the time to play some games in it? Well, funny enough, it all started off with um, a Game Boy. Have you ever seen four policemen sitting on the sofa going like this? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what about you, Hugh? Do you like a little bit of a play? Yeah, yeah, I've got a Sega Mega Drive of my own, which is on, on a permanent loan to my girlfriend's cousin at the moment. So, Eddie, I'd like it back, please. All right. Well, obviously, the question on everybody's lips is, does Bob cry a fiddle with his joystick? Well, Eric's very into motorbikes. He's, he's more into twisting his throttle. Yeah, or uh, <laughs> tinkering with his tappets, mate. <laughs> and Hugh Higginson from the Bell are preparing for an awesome shootout in Gallagher's Gallery. I'm being accompanied by Tim Boone from NMS. Tim, any tips for the boys on this then? Why is it that you always do the shootouts, by the way? Oh, well, you know what they say about the Games Master, Dominic. He likes a bit of a bang, doesn't he? But uh, this has got to be the silliest game I've, ever se I've seen since, well, basically since that carnation. It's <laughs> so stupid. I I'm not even going to bother to explain it. You've just got to see it to believe it. All right, to reiterate the challenge again, Mark and Hugh have to shoot their way through the supermarket level. Whoever's got the most points at the end is the winner, unless one of them shoots something they shouldn't, in which case they've automatically lost. So we need some careful trigger fingers here. Are you ready, guys? Yeah. Then off you go. Okay, so Hugh has the purple score in the bottom left. Mark has the green score in the bottom right. Okay, watch where the fly is going to land and shoot wherever it lands. Okay, so that's Mark got the first one there. There it goes. Oh, he got a couple there though. Hang on the jelly. There we go. Two for three. Mark's the spud. And finally the um, well, the vomit really. It's going to land on that. And away we go. Like there's something Andy Marisha picked up. Okay. So it's 800 points to Mark. 450 now, points. An egg is going to fall off into this list. Now, depending on where it falls, depends on how many points you get. They've flown. Oh, they could not. I think they might have just got it. Right, yeah. Just got it in the fall. Excellent. They got a the wedding, wedding cake. cake. That's Mark again. Excellent. 1150, please. 750. So now shield the diet coke as much as you can, as fast as you can. Mark's sneaking ahead. You can see Mark's bullet holes are green and, and shoes are red. Yep. Yeah. Mark 1300. Again. Please shoes 750. Shoot that diet. Tesco's do you just shoot oh, those horns? Here they go. Oh, Mark's freaking further ahead. Perhaps you shot. shooting blanks, but no, he got one. Yeah, yep, excellent. 800, I thought Mark's still ahead with 750. And we hope we're going to be close on. No one would have come. Oh, yeah, I think this is a walkover. Okay, now shoot the spinach. Okay. Whatever you do, do not shoot the cherries. Don't shoot the cherry because Gallagher likes cherries. Shoot okay, the spinach. There we go. Here we are. 50 plays, no, 1900 though. Yep, shoot that. 900 still yeah, for man. Mark Winget, and that is the end of the challenge. So at the end, Mark Winget at 1900, Hugh Higginson 850. So Mark Winget is the winner. Okay, you're lovely. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, now first of all, Hugh, bad luck. It was uh, it wasn't much of a fair cop there, was it? Gutted, absolutely gutted. I mean, what, what's your excuse? Um, I'm useless. That's my <laughs> excuse. That's all I can say. Really, he was better than I was on the day. Well, Mark, I think we may have to have an investigation. There was a serious shoot the kill policy going on there from you. Bullets were flying everywhere. Well, you know that's that's CID for you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, Mark, you are the winner of television's most glittering prize, the Games Master Golden Joystick. So let's have another round of applause for our two celebrity guests, Hugh Higginson and Mark Wigan. Thanks, guys. Cheers, all the best. Well, Hugh and Mark catch a quick chopper back to Sunhill, some more mortals are made to look ever so slightly silly in the consultation zone. Hello, Games Master. Welcome to my consultation area up here on the helipad. How can I make you happy? On Super Mario World, on the Super NES, I can see the exit of Chocolate Ghost House, but I can't actually reach it. What should I do? 
Three ghosts need to be gently coaxed into position. Simply move toward them and move away again. Repeat this a few times and you will entice them out into the open. Whenever you turn to face them, they'll turn into blocks from which you can leap toward the exit. Simple solutions for simple people. Thanks a lot. Your gratitude is appreciated. Who's next? Hello, James Master. I find it difficult on blazing skies on the Super NES. Can you help me, please? You foolish fly-by-night. From the title screen, select Continue, but don't enter a password. Instead, select End. One of the pilots, Colonel Marcel LeBlanc, will now have splendid disappearing scores in every department. A tally-ho! Thanks. That's great. Yes, some I know. And uh, who's last for the session? Hello, Games Master. Yes, yes. Um, get on with it, dear fellow. On level 13 of pushover, I can't crack it. Can you help me, please? This game does indeed require a modicum of logic. As you enter, pick up the tile nearest to you. Then walk right and fall onto the platform below, automatically dropping the tile that you were holding. Now go down to the lowest platform and push over the tile furthest to the left to complete the level. Great, thanks. That's enough for goodies for the moment. I don't want to spoil you. Instead of going over to Games Master for the final challenge, we've got something a wee bit special planned. You may remember earlier on in the series, Danny Curley took on all comers at any Sega game. Well, now we decided to do the same with Super Nintendo games. So please welcome British Nintendo champion, Thomas Patterson. <laughs> Calm down. Right, Thomas, tell us a little bit about how you became champion. Well, I played a national tabloid Nintendo competition and I won all that through all the stages. So, uh, are you quite confident you can beat anyone on any Nintendo game? Yeah, uh, hopefully. <laughs> all right then, so if there's anyone there who'd like to challenge Thomas, please stick up your hand if you fancy yourself as a Nintendo expert. Okay, too ugly, too ugly. Oh, gorgeous, yes. Young boy up there, blonde hair, stripey outfit. Come on down. So what's your name then? Mike Bedford. Mike Bedford. Where are you from, Mike Bedford? Southampton. Southampton. And your nominated challenge is? NCAA basketball. NCAA basketball. What are you like at kissing the rim, Thomas? Not bad. I'll give my best shot. OK, then. Right, Mike, take the left. Thomas, take the right. Let's get ready for tip-off. While our YTS researcher Doug sets up the game, I'm joined by Jim Douglas from Games Master Magazine. Jim, any tips for this basketball game? Yep, I think um, once your opponent takes a shot on basket, you really shouldn't despair. You should hang around and wait for the rebound, because if you can get hold of the ball, then you can be up the other end of the court before they know about it. OK, then, yes, you must take every chance, because it's the first person to get to ten points. Right, are our competitors ready? Yep. Yep. Then, off you go. Here we go to the tip off. Mike Bedford's in the Kansas side in the white playing up now. Whichever team's attacking the basket plays up the screen. Oh, it's a shot there from Mike. Oh, oh, it hits the rim. Now here's now, the three bounce. This is where you can really make the most of the rebound. If he'd got hold of that, then he could be straight out the other end. Okay, this is Thomas now in the blue. Going up there now. He's getting in quite close. He jumps. He oh. shoots. Oh, oh, it's a rebound again. Yeah, I really think they should just get straight Oh, he's got in. the rebound. He's oh. Thomas gets the rebound, slam dunks it for two points. OK, so here goes Mike. You may notice little squares above each character. If the squares are shapes are green, it's safe to pass to them. If it's yellow, it's quite safe. If it's red, it's dangerous. That was a dangerous one there. He went for a pass, missed it. It's out of bounds, which means possession goes to Mike. Mike stays near the basket. Mike oh, slam dunks to all. Here comes Thomas then in the backcourt. He's going to have to pass quickly here. He's going to get a backcourt violation. No, he's all right then. I'd like to see more passing here, Jim. Maybe yeah, this but, is the answer. Uh, well, yeah, that was a very brave pass there. I wonder if that's going to pay off the whole length of the court there. Oh, again, it hits the rim. But he's got on the rebound. A oh, slam dunk. Come on, yes. a slam dunk in the basket. Yes. 
Oh, Derek Thomas. Thomas. It was the long pass, Jim, that did it. That's exactly, that really long one all the way down. OK, here comes Mike now. It's 4-2. Mike's not passing. He's taking all on his own there. He's going there, but it's heavy. Oh, again, no. it's a rebound. Oh, but he's got the rebound back in. Oh, he passed there. The man's open. He exactly. shoots. Good work. Oh, another rebound. Being very unlucky he's there, but surely now. Scores. Well, the effort's really paid off in the end there. It certainly did. That was sustained pressure there. It's 4 all, And here goes Thomas again. It's the first person to 10 points. Lovely long pass oh, there. Long oh, it's right off. Here he comes up. He shoots. The distance ones just don't seem to be making it through the rim. That's right, I know it's that they're having both our players having problems with the rims tonight. But this is some nice passing here from Mike. He tries another one oh, and it's in there. That's marvelous. Excellent that's shot. Really like 6 4 to Mike in the white. Oh, he's not messing about now, no, Thomas. Exactly. Is that long passing game really seems to be. Going for a three pointer here. Oh, dear. But he's got it back again. Here he and comes he's in. Slammed one hand and slammed on. Oh. Optimistic shot there. <laughs> Fantastically <laughs> optimistic. I don't know quite how he expected it to come off. But it did lay him up for a nice rebound nonetheless. He's tried his shot. No rebound again. Now here we go. Counter attack from Thomas. What are we going to see from him here? Long oh, pass. Oh, no, right down the court. Oh, no, he's got, no, no, he's got a bat there. They sort of swapped a... about a bit. Oh, a rebound, but he's got, he's got the rebound here. Now he slammed on yeah. one hand so one more score and Thomas will win he's proven a bit of an expert with a one handed slam dunk so. exactly a really long pass all the way down the court and then somebody to just put it right through the net it's marvellous proven to be a good tactic there here comes Mike oh, oh he's equalised very tense here eight all the next score will decide it it could be anybody's here a nice short pass from Thomas there he's weaving up the court he's stopping there that's Robin right he's making good progress here. he wants to get it into his man right he's by the basket he's approaching the basket he's trying to do it all himself up. he shoots it's he was right down to the wire there Mike it was eight all and then he just managed to slot the last one in what was what was the difference in the end there Mike I think it was uh, he got the rebounds of my shots yeah he got the fast breaks after that didn't he but you did a brilliant performance you enjoyed the game yeah it's brilliant excellent okay Thomas now you are a champion but this boy pushed you really close didn't he Aye, he's gonna be a brilliant player when he gets older and any excuses from you why was it so close oh well a bit slack <laughs> But it's like, hopefully you can tighten up next week because unfortunately we're not going to give you a golden joystick because we think that you're too good for stuff like that. But what we will do is ask if you'll come back next week to take on someone else. Aye, no problem. Okay then, let's have another round of applause for Mike Bedford and the reigning champion, Thomas Patterson. <laughs> That's the gong once more, which means it's supper time out here on the camp. Auntie Maurice has done us some cocky sound jack with bean sprouts. Next week on the show, Kathy Dennis will be flying out to try and save the world on Global Gladiators. Kathy and I will see you in seven days. Good night. worried by stories about video games and epilepsy and would like more information you can send for the games master fact sheet please write to p.o box 91 london e14 9gt enclosing a stamped addressed envelope alternatively you can call our special games master information line on 0891 887 787 calls are charged at 36 p.m minute cheap rate and 48p per minute at all other times you must have permission from whoever pays the phone bill